And now this was actually a topic submitted to us by a loyal listener, and we appreciate Daniel. Um, we appreciate you sending in the suggestion. And this is about Star Trek's uh, has been confirmed. They're getting their own new TV series. We talked about this a couple months ago, uh, and it's set for 2017. And so that's the story. And then the sub headline is, and why nobody's going to watch it because they're doing something with it that actually really upsets me. Um, so after rumors have been flying around of a new Star Trek show popping up, I mean, rumors for years have been flying around that a new Star Trek show is going to be popping up with CBS. We finally have confirmation that we will get a new Star Trek show on CBS starting in 2017. Now, the way this will be done is the first episode will be on broadcast television, and then all subsequent episodes will be on CBS All Access, CBS's uh, streaming service. So that's the way they're going to release it. Now, it looks like it's going to be helmed by some really, really good people. Alex Kurtzman um, is attached. I believe he pr he's attached to produce this. Uh, if you don't know who Kurtzman was, he actually produced and co-wrote uh, the two newest Star Trek movies, uh, both in 2009 and 2013. So he's got some. He's established with the Star Trek brand, and he's shown that he knows what he's doing. He he's obviously a big fan of the lore because if you watch that 2009 movie, that was I mean that was just spectacular. The 2000 Into Darkness was good too. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but it wasn't the uh, original Star Trek reboot movie. Wow, that's weird to say. Original Star Trek movie reboot. Yes, because we're at that <laughs> point now. <laughs> we are at that point. We are at that point. So um, now no words yet as, as to plot details. But what I did see was that they will be um, introducing new characters and new civilizations. So I guess those are kind of plot details, but not not nothing specific. So that kind of makes me yeah, think I mean, we're going to send another five-year yeah. mission out or something Yeah, that like. tagline sounds to me like, so you're going to do Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going to do Star Trek. Just, well, I mean, remember that we bounced around some ideas intro, like, that to it was going to be in a new life and new civilizations? New civilizations, yes. That's the, that's the beginning of the <laughs> over show. Um, I mean, but we did talk about how they might center it more on, like, a galactic universe thing rather than just one ship. That, and the work ends up we one thought, ship. Though, they might they might go more uh, center of the federation rather. Yeah, than and our da our buddy Daniel had a ton of a cool, really cool ideas that would make the the new Star Trek show a really viable and entertaining show. So there's plenty of great ideas out there for this show, uh, and whichever direction they go, I'm pretty sure I'll like it. I do. I am appealed to the the vision of okay, we're just going to do it again. We're going to kind of set it a little differently, but we're going to give you all the exploration and. And really be able to develop the characters on the ships, which is, is it, that's that's what it's all about. It's about you know how everybody interacts with every, everybody. They they really have a really cool dynamic between the captains and the first mates and and the doctors and all these people, and they all develop them very individually. And since they're supposed to be coming from all places of the galaxy, you can really throw everything in there and make it a giant melting pot. And that's really what what I loved about those other Star Trek shows, the diversity of the stories, the way they, they brought them all together and the way they could kind of, you know, kind of like an X-Men type thing and comment on the social status of the world, but doing it in a sci-fi way. Like when you say, okay, well, we got to accept these aliens, even if they're green, people might not realize it, but they're, Helping with race relations. That's what the original Star Trek did way back in the 60s. It's saying, hey, you know, they had a black woman in the, in the you know, in the, co in the command center. And that was a big thing. And, yeah. and she was totally equal. And in the 1966, well, she wasn't just equal. She was an officer. She was, yeah, she was an officer. She was ahead of a lot of people, yeah. which was a very forward thinking way of doing things back in the 60s. Unfortunately, you know, we have to look back and say that was forward thinking when today we'd be like, well, well there's no big deal. But and, that's and part of the reason we which, don't care about that. That was part of the way that they approached it, which was good, was they also would more directly deal with some social commentary in a very uh, you know, hindsight kind of way. They would comment on the past so like oh you know back in the whatever time they used to do this or whatever and they mm -hmm. would say it uh either in a derogatory way or or like oh i can't believe that happened that's just kind of weird well one of my favorite examples of that from star all the star trek shows was deep space nine there was this big hollow program that they had that took them back to vegas in the 60s and the captain, um, Benjamin Sisko, he's like, I don't want to go there. They weren't very nice to black people back then. 
and and then his his girlfriend slash wife at the time is like, well, when I, when I've been in the program, I didn't notice anything like that. They they haven't you know program that into it and it's that was just kind of their barbaric way but they've updated it for you know modern times and so they do do little things like that so it, yeah. it, it's that's part of star trek so them uh, introducing new civilizations i mean think about what we have going on with just stuff like here in america we talk about you know the terrorist factions in the middle east i mean you could almost look at them like they're alien species to us and you could do some really cool storylines with mirroring some of that you know taking hey they're not all bad you know most of them are good and there's just a sect of you know i mean you could just do some really cool things and, and they've actually even dealt the with traditional terror. social commentary <laughs> they've dealt huh? with terrorist groups in star trek before well yeah view. yeah and, and that autos, was just a really bland example of what they yeah. could do with you know just but that's what star trek is yeah. if you really look at it it's more than just a sci-fi show it's more of a commentary on the social times that we live in you know, and each Star Trek yeah. show took a, a little bit of a different take on yeah. it. the original and one to n the next generation. And I don't think I don't care what anybody says. Next generation is by far, in a way, the best of all the Star Trek shows. But yes. also with Deep Space Nine and Voyager with the the female captain. Again, it's a lot of things that's that's forward thinking that yeah. we don't get from a lot of TV show. So, yeah. and even aside from that, now like let's you start were saying, talking about, though, with the uh, let's talk about why nobody's going to watch this. And Brian so it's going to hear be, me. no one's going to watch it. All right. I'm going to want to watch it, but I'm not going to watch it because this is ridiculous. So it's, instead of CBS, which has their own broadcast network, which reaches millions, hundreds of millions of people, they're deciding that they're going to put the Star Trek show on their CBS all access video on demand service, which right now is already running. If you pay $5.99 a month, you can get any CBS show ever at any time they ever put out or any of the live shows right after they air on TV, it's pretty much like you're on demand, but you have to pay five 99 for it. Like this is ridiculous. This is not like Netflix. This is, not, this is not bringing you a whole bunch of stuff from all over the place. This is just one TV channel saying here. And now not only do you have a monopoly on your own TV station, you have dedicated airwaves to your TV station. Now you have to pay five ninety nine to watch the rest of their stuff. Like this is ridiculous. I would think that the advertisers would be more upset than anybody, because they're like, "Wait, we pay you this much to be on your TV channel, and now you're going to make it so that we're useless. Like, you're, you're going to make it so people have to pay not to watch our ads. Like, how does that make sense? I I don't understand how that makes sense in a business sense for for CBS. Now I do understand that a lot of stuff is going that direction. But broadcast TV, I thought, was the staple that was going to be able to stick around after the streaming channels got rid of all the cable channels. Because now, that was the one you didn't have to pay for. I would say, I, I don't know that I'm, I'm so critical of this move. I don't think it's going to work right now the way that they're hoping. I think that they're clearly thinking, okay, Star Trek is a big enough name, big enough brand. Mm -hmm. That's will be able to it'll give us the momentum to to really push this service that they've been trying to to push and getting ready to push um because people are going to want to watch it um, yeah and i would well, say i want to watch it it's yeah. really I, it's really annoying that i'm gonna have to pay 5.99 like i said i i won't watch it but i will watch it because it's Star Trek. <laughs> exactly i think that's what what they're thinking with this one it but jerks. also we've been <laughs> holding ransom to watch star trek how yeah. dare you and I'm one of those few people out here that likes Star Trek more than Star Wars. I'm sorry. Many people are going to hate me for it, but I like the Star Trek TV shows way better than I like the three Star Trek movies. I'm not even going to... Yeah, Chewie, whatever. He agrees. There was three movies or there was decades of TV shows, Chewie. Come on. Yeah, I know. All right, I'm sorry. I take it back. I can't say that ever again. That'll be the one and only time you've ever heard me say that on this show for fear of my life. So... <laughs> But yeah, and, and it's just something I want access to. I really, really want access to this TV show. And if I have to pay five ninety nine a month, I guess I might do it. But yeah. I will do it begrudgingly. Was, yeah, the other thing I was going to say, though, is we've been talking about how a lot of these big companies do need to wise up and see where the, the business model is really moving to now. Streaming yeah, but that's not broadcast is where TV. No, broadcast needs to, it, they're going to be gone. 
they've already got it. Broadcast TV is not going anywhere because they've already got good on demand with most of their channels. I mean, almost anything on these major channels, you can go to video on demand exactly. and watch That's it them free embracing afterwards. the fact that they have to move away from this model yeah. as much as But you don't have possible. to make people pay for it. That's the way to get the revenue. But but here's what I think is going to happen. Not happy. I think not happy. that well, free. I think that this is not going to work out. I think it's not going to work out, and I think that in a year or a few months or whatever, they're going to see that this card that they're playing, which is a heavy card, is not working, and they're going to revert back, and they're going to do like I've seen some other streaming services do, and they're going to either kick this over to Hulu, or they're going to kick it over to some other streaming service, or just provide for free. Because they already provide like the latest... Netflix, but they do provide Netflix. um the late their latest episodes like the last four of their latest episodes for all their other series, free streaming. Um, yeah. I imagine they'll either on demand just, or you go to the website. Yeah, and they're going to just decide either to put this completely fr- on their free streaming part of their website at some point, um, you know, after this has been tried. Or they'll uh, kick it over, like I said, to Hulu, so they can get the the same kind of uh, advertising revenue from from. Why wouldn't they just put it on CBS? I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. They could do it on CBS. They could do it on CBS and keep it there. If depends on what they think is the better deal. Um, But I have seen um, like Funimation did this, where they create their own streaming service. I actually, I actually have it, and it's awesome. Yeah, it is. But and they were trying to keep everything in that and then it, i don't think it was doing as well so then they they did hand off their free side of their streaming service to be handled to by somebody hulu, else to hulu specifically gotcha. um and i think that you know it, it reduces the cost for them to support it and hulu already has the revenue model built in and the audience yeah. built in so but them. but most of i mean you still like if you got the funimation thing at least they have like the update they update you on episodes i mean they dub these they have, things almost in real time on the, on the streaming too yeah. still but and they dub a lot of these tv shows almost in real time it airs in japan and a week later funimation has it dubbed and ready for the american audience so maybe not that quick but um pretty quickly i mean they do have in texas there's a big group of voice actors that is very gainfully employed for a pretty consistent basis yeah. uh, because they're just constantly dubbing these things and putting them yeah. up on their streaming site. But, so, but that's my that's my guess of, of what's going to happen. And if nothing else, they're going to put it somewhere else at some point. Maybe they'll even put it back on their broadcast TV show as in rerun states after a year or something. So. If you really want to watch that first season immediately, you probably are going to have to just uh, put down that six box. Otherwise, if you are able to wait, I'm sure they're going to... I don't think it's they're going to get enough of a response to keep it on that yeah. exclusive, to keep that service. And it's not like I'm not able else. to wait. It's just that I don't want to. But let us know what you think. Are you so excited for a new Star Trek show that you're willing to plop down six bucks a month just to watch it? Or are you going to do what Brendan says and just wait it out when they finally get it out to a streaming service that you already have yeah. or that they decide to drop this model altogether? And to be fair, so, let us know. 23, if it's like 26 episodes of hour long episodes, if they do like they used to do for the old Star Trek, six bucks, not that bad. Like that's 26 hours of entertainment or something, right? That's more than yeah, but that's six bucks a month. For, they're not going to put it all up on streaming at once. It's going to probably be released episodically. Mm, so they're going to lock yes, you in for it at won't least be the five Netflix or six model. months. I, I keep thinking <laughs> the Netflix model of yeah, everything's it's, there. It's, it's, it's going to be like okay. five or six months, okay. seven months of them putting it out every week. So, yeah, you got to yeah, multiply. 20 that, bucks remember. is made, 20, 26 bucks. That's making it a little bit whatever. You know what I mean, it's, not, it's not a huge it's, not it's, just still, it's, yeah, it's still annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's still annoying. So, but yeah, that's, let us know what you got. Uh, but let us know what you think. So, let's...